Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Bright Torian. And Jinx here. And welcome to Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord on the PlayStation 5. So, we've been waiting for this game to release for a very long time. I believe it came to Steam on Early Access a while ago. On the consoles, particularly on PlayStation's platforms, they often don't allow the Early Access games uh, to release, and you gotta wait until the uh, the game's fully done, or at least the 1.0 version is done. I'm sure we'll see a ton of patches to this. So we did cover the last game uh, that actually came to console, and that was Mountain Blade Warband. And that was one of our early series. Uh, I think it was our second P plus J series that actually saw some success on the channel. It was absolutely terrible. Don't suggest <laughs> that you go watch it. Is uh, it even still on the channel? I think so. I think it's still on there. Uh, but yeah, I wouldn't suggest you check it out. So we had a terrible mic. Both of our voices sounded odd. We had a much lower quality recording software as well. So it just wasn't a, uh, a good series overall. Uh, but we enjoyed it. And again, it did see some success. And uh, we've been looking forward to this to finally release on console for a very long time. Now, I did want to show you guys that on the PlayStation 5, uh, they do have this special graphics mode. I don't know if it's available on PS4 Pro, uh, but I would assume that it's not available for the regular PlayStation 4s. And so you have two options here. You can go with the performance, which will allow you to run it with 60 frames per second with the dynamic resolution, the lower quality settings, and less units on the battlefield. Or you can do the fidelity, which runs the game at 30 frames per second at the native 4K resolution, higher quality settings, and more more units on the battle. We're going to do performance. I just feel like the 60 frames per second would be helpful for this style of game. We'll see, guys. I'm probably going to be pretty cruddy no matter what. I recall this being a, a very challenging uh, kind of combat. Yeah, the combat was definitely pretty difficult to get used to yeah because jinx played it as well yeah uh, yeah i recall you uh playing a little bit off camera i uh, mean yeah, let's go and hop into a new game this is essentially blind i did try a little custom battle while we waited for it to finish downloading because uh, you can do the custom uh, the custom battles when you get about halfway through the download and that's the only thing they'll allow you to do but basically that custom battle just showed me how terrible i was at the game uh, so we very much are going into this blind so it's going to start a new campaign now this is a game that does have the the third portion the third person combat i don't know if you can play in first person for 500 years the calradian empire dominated the continent Its armies scattered foes before them. The strongholds of proud tribes crumbled beneath its engines of war. From the forests of the north to the wastes of the south, all was brought beneath the standard of their legions. Brutal as the conquest was, the wise agreed that it brought peace. The land, now untroubled by armies, grew rich. But empires, like men, grow old. Leaders lose a common cause. Corruption spreads. Old enemies learn the Empire's tricks and devise new ones of their own. Until one day, the bonds holding the Empire snap. Then comes the Civil War, pitting all against all. A time of hatred. A time of suffering. But also, even in the worst hours, a time of courage and defiance. As new leaders arise, from new places and new peoples, 
to turn back the tides of destruction and bring forth a new world from the ashes of the old. All right, so we had a little cutscene there introducing us to the story and the world. But as I was saying, the game does feature that third-person combat, which is quite challenging. However, that is just a small fraction of the game. Uh, there is actually quite a bit more to it. Of course, in the battles, you have the kind of commander aspect to it, uh, which reminds of Total War in a sense. It's kind of like Total War with the, the units. Uh, except for you're actually down on the battlefield with your character, you know, giving your units orders, moving around, uh, you know, doing many of the things you do in a Total War strategy game. Uh, and then in addition to that, you have that top layer map where you travel around on it. Uh, I don't know how detailed it is compared to the previous version. You'd expect there'd be uh, quite a bit better graphics and, and quite a bit more detail to it, but we'll see as we play. But then there's all those other aspects to it, like with the story and the characters. Uh, I recall in the, the previous game, you could like get married. If you weren't a noble, you could become a noble. You, I believe you could have children. I never got that far in the game, but uh, there's also like a trading aspect. And uh, you can get villages in, you know, in your name, uh, become a lord, uh, get castles in your control. All kinds of really cool stuff. So we'll be checking that out as we continue with the series. It looks like our first action here would be choose the culture of our character. All right, so where do we want to live? I don't really know anything about any of these. It feels almost like these are different than the previous game, but perhaps not. Maybe I just forgot the names of them all. Yeah, I feel like I forgot the names, but they do seem different. So basically, we've got some kind of mountain kind of mountain region the peoples. The Vlandians. The Vlandians. That sounds familiar. So I kind of feel like that maybe this is all the same uh, peoples. We got the Sturgeons. So these are our snow peoples. We got the Empire. We got the Batanians. So that looks kind of swampy. Wetlands. The Kuzates. Yeah, this all does seem kind of familiar. So I think it might be the same character. A bit, cultures, yeah. whatever. Uh, so these are probably like the Mongol type uh, no nomads. Horse nomads in the plains. The steppes. They kidnapped me. Yeah, if those are the people, <laughs> I, do rec yeah, I do recall Jinx getting kidnapped by them. And then we have the uh, Azurai. Azurai? Azurai. Azurai. Uh, so these are desert peoples riding camels. All right, so I, th I feel like I got to go with the Sturgeons just because I'm a, a person from a cold place from up, uh, up north, Pennsylvania. He likes to freeze me out. I also prefer the cold. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I do not like the heat. Uh, so this this is fitting for me. Oh, you can actually read them too. I didn't realize we could click on them and see a little description Ooh, they have here. Little bonuses. And they have these these bonuses and penalties. Mm-hmm. So the we're not going to read through all these. It take too long. But this is the Vlandians. They fight with spears and lances on horseback. So like war warlike nobles in a feudal society. You get five percent more renown from battles. 15% more income while serving as a mercenary, and 10% production bonus to villages that are bound to castles. But there's also a penalty. Recruiting lords to armies costs 20% more influence. So if we go with the Sturgeons, our roleplay choice here. These are good hunters and wanderers. They like to trade and plunder, so I kind of feel like these are the Vikings, the kind of Viking-like Norse characters uh, from the previous game. Mm-hmm. That yeah, would be fitting. Yeah, help of Nord mercenaries. Yeah, I think so. I think those were called the Nords, actually. So th these might not all be the same groups of people then. But they're in the same world, apparently. Maybe a different land. So our bonuses here would be recruiting and upgrading infantry troops are 25% cheaper. And armies lose 20% less daily cohesion. The penalty is 20% more relationship penalty from kingdom decisions. So of course they're going to be kind of more focused on... Their infantry. That makes sense. We got the Empire. Uh, these guys have mobile field armies. 
And you get a 20% less garrison troop wage. That's helpful. So you save a lot of money. Uh, being in the army brings 25% more influence. And village hearths increase 20% less. So our desert peoples, their caravans are 30% cheaper to build, 10% less trade penalties. So focus on trade. That makes sense. And uh, no speed penalty on deserts. And their daily wages of troops in the party are increased by 5%. So that could be expensive. But you probably earn it back with your trade, I think. So here's our step nomads. Masters of mounted archery shooting and then galloping out of reach. So it makes sense here. Very uh, influenced by Mongols or Huns. Uh, recruiting and upgrading mounted troops are 10% cheaper. 25% production bonus to horse, mule, cow, and sheep in villages owned by the rulers. And 20% less tax income from towns. So you're going to get less tax income, but you're going to get more production bonuses. And uh, recruiting and upgrading troops is cheaper. I can't wait to see the towns. Yeah, should be interesting. And then we got our, I'm guessing, kind of swamp-like people. Swamp millions. Or maybe they're forest-like, I don't know. Yeah, it seems pretty forested. But they prefer to fight on foot while using great axes and two-handed swords with deadly efficiency. 50% less speed penalty and 15% sight range bonus in forest. So yeah, they are kind of forest-like people. Uh, towns owned by their rulers have plus one militia production. And they have a penalty of 10% slower build rate for town projects and settlements. They paint their faces. Okay. Get all crazy going into battle. I, I kind of like... What it's saying here with the great axes and two-handed swords. Yeah. I like fighting that way. So I almost want to go with the forest peoples. Yeah, I can see doing that as well. Yeah, as I far as like, go with them. As far as bonuses and penalties, I mean, they all seem pretty decent. Some of them might be a little bit more hefty. The daily wages, for instance, seem like that might be really expensive and thus uh any bonus to your to your troops like the 20 percent less garrison troop wage here a reduction of of wages i should say seems like it'd be pretty powerful but we don't want to be imperials so we're not gonna go with them uh yeah i think we're still gonna go with the snow peoples guys just for something a little bit different yeah i think that's what we're gonna do all right so let's go with them and let's see what the next step is. It oh, is creating yeah. our character. And as you can see, it is a lot more detailed already than anything we saw in the previous game. And he is naked and happy about it. We're practically naked. We got a loincloth on. That's like a diaper. Yeah, <laughs> basically. And uh, you can select your gender. My faces look kind of silly. I wonder... If your culture changes your look at like all. your starting look. I'm not seeing a major difference here, but yeah. Looks like it does change change your look at least some. Is this the Empire? That was the first group. Oh. So like, let's just pick somebody who's clearly... Like they look snobby. Yeah, here we go. So you see it's, it's a slight difference. In their uh, character models. Yeah. Okay. So I suppose that's one thing to consider as well. Like if you want to play as a specific race, then maybe you want to take a look at them. And these people have freckles, apparently. Like, why are the ladies so hairless? Because <laughs> <laughs> clearly they have razors that allows them to shave their bodies. They wax. <laughs> they wax. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Now we can randomize our character look if we want to. Gonna get some monstrous. And get a fatter character here. Shorter character, they just keep on getting shorter. Uh, maybe, yeah, I don't know, skin color didn't seem to play that big of a role here. Since here with this particular culture, we're getting quite a few different races. Well, there's a big old guy. It's a big feller. Yeah, I guess you could pick whatever skin color you want. Okay, I didn't see that. That's right down here. So yeah, you're not really limited. Which is great, because it allows you to pick the culture you want. And it makes sense, too, because people move around. You know, people don't uh, stay in one place. 
I feel like I wouldn't be as white as I am in real life <laughs> if I was a warrior and out there like fighting in the sun all the time. Yeah, and the snow reflects the sun and tans you. And frankly, I'm not even that white. I'm kind of a pinkish color. Yeah, you're a rosy fella. Very red color, yeah. So we're going to go with this little rosy look here. I'm a yellow belly. Yeah. <laughs> so we got different voices. Release arrows! Fall back! He's a ventriloquist. <laughs> At them! Yeah, he doesn't move his mouth when he talks. At them! Make a line. <laughs> Can I He's just very enthusiastic. Make a circle. What does he even say? <laughs> <laughs> he said make a circle. <laughs> Hold your ground. We'll just go with the first one. I don't really care enough to do this any further. Um, oh, you can actually change your voice pitch. Okay, I see. So if you wanted to like At last. be really squeaky. <laughs> Yeah, I guess you need to make it really voice. high. Yeah. Backs to each other! At them! <laughs> Alright, we're gonna bring it down some. I don't think we'll just go with the first one. Rah! Yeah. <laughs> That's the one we're gonna go with. Uh, we're gonna be a giant. And... <laughs> see how we're... We're, we're gonna eat good. Yeah, we're not trying to be fat. We've got a build thing down here, build meter. I'm not entirely sure if this will... That's probably just your muscle definition. That's what you'd think, yeah. Okay, so we're going to be really bulky since I'm a pretty muscly guy in real life. Okay, I see. So if you did this and then you brought your build all the way down... And you have a pouch. Yeah, and a little pot belly. All right, so we'll bring it down some because he looks, I don't know, his head doesn't fit with the rest of his body. Can we rotate this at all? He needs a bigger head. No, we can't rotate it, unfortunately. He does. That's what I was thinking is that his head doesn't fit with his body. All right, so I think that's fine. So let's go ahead and move over to the next category. I did want to see what all these are about. Okay. All right, so this is our face. This is, there's a lot of detail to this, guys. Yeah, wow. Okay, I wasn't intending to spend this much time on it, so we might just do something kind of quick here. So this is face depth. And I don't know how you're supposed to see. Yeah, I can't seem to rotate the character. Maybe I'm just doing it wrong. I'm trying all of them. Uh, L1 and R1 moves you through the screens here. R2 and L2 don't seem to do anything. And these two sticks, obviously the left stick moves this here, which unfortunately developers did decide to make uh, this console version like a mouse using the stick. I don't really like when they do that with the ports. I prefer that they add, uh, you know, controls for the, you know, console controller. Uh, but yeah, they did decide to give you the kind of mouse function, which just isn't very good on, on the sticks. But, uh, yeah. They're like, do you want the game or not? There's no ability to rotate this guy as far as I can see. So, like, with face depth, like, how could you even really see what you're getting here? What are all the arrows on the left? Yeah, I just looked at those. None of those are that. Uh, yeah. Jinx was sleeping during was that, that part. No, I wasn't. <laughs> We're just going to put this in the middle somewhere. Uh, face ratio. Okay, so is that how big our forehead is? <laughs> That's what it looks like. <laughs> His forehead gets bigger. All right, so if we were Jinx, we'd have a big old forehead. Yep. That's good for head button. Mm hmm. And this is our face weight. Okay. Give ourselves a little bit of chunk. We like to eat. I'm going to put it in the middle here. Uh, cheekbone height. This is not going to look anything like me in real life, guys. Just go keep that in mind. Because <laughs> it I takes me the like... nose is right. <laughs> no, not really. It's not thin enough. And it's got, he's got some big old nostrils. I got those thin, thin nostrils. I mean, he does have a giant honker, though, which that's accurate. I do have a big old nose. Uh, so that was cheekbone height. This is cheekbone width. So we're just going to kind of play around with this. It does let you guys see, you know, the 
the character customization, see how much depth you can get out of it. I don't know how often we even see our face, but... We'll probably never see it again. I don't know, because it is a third-person game, and I don't know how it looks when you're in the face sharpness, huh? Oh, yeah. How does it work with your children? I was thinking when, yeah, with the dialogue as well. some ugly babies. Yeah, and is there DNA for children? Some CK3 type stuff, or... I just don't know. Okay, so there's your temple with. It's going to be kind of like a lot, of, a lot of settings in the middle to play it safe. Our ear shave. Okay, so these should probably <laughs> stick out some. You can flap them. Mm-hmm. But I do have smaller ears despite my ears sticking out some. So yeah, we'll have small ears that stick out. Maybe a little less. Oh, wow, you got a symmetry as well. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay, let's go to move to... Oh, wow, so these are all face settings. It doesn't look like there's any... Like, a uh, body customization. So we don't have to, like, customize our arm length or anything like that. It's just really the face. But quite a few settings, as you guys can see here. Uh, so our eyebrow depth. A lot of these don't seem to be making huge adjustments here. Right? Am I just crazy? Yeah, it does seem like small adjustments probably to keep from monsters happening. Yeah, from having monsters. Okay, well, whatever. We'll just do whatever that is. There are also the, the types. So I don't know if that changes like the shape of the eyebrow. Oh, yep, you're right. And there's like a, this one just had a skin type. It didn't have a uh, face type. So yeah, I suppose you could like pick the, okay, so I think that's like how bushy they are. You need some bushy brows. How much do you pluck them? Okay, so yeah, that's what that is. I'm glad we took a look at this though, because I didn't even notice it. So we're going to go with... One of these early ones I saw here looks pretty good. Not that one. We'll go two. I like the imperfections here. Somebody doesn't have time to pluck them. Alright, we're going to give him some lower brows. He's angry all the time. <laughs> and look at this eye position. Okay, so we can move it up some. Yeah, we'll do that. Give some more beadier eyes. Monolid eyes, huh? Oh, yeah, that's how you get the beady <laughs> going. <laughs> All right, so yeah, we'll bring it. We'll bring it this way. Up here towards the top, we got the eyelid height. I mean, they really went all in for the. I guess that's pretty standard these days, though. Yeah, people want to customize. They want to make themselves. Yeah, everybody wants to, to have as much uh, customization as possible. For okay. me, it depends on the game and how often, I, how often I'm going to actually look at myself. Yeah, because it takes so long mm -hmm. that whenever there's a character customization, I find myself like sometimes not wanting to to play a new game because I just don't feel like like I want to play. You know, I want to start a new campaign. But I just don't feel like creating a, a character. Yeah. But I also don't want to play with some monster who I don't, like, relate to, you know? I'm bring these a little closer. And yeah, we'll just leave that as is. I guess we can bring it. That's how symmetrical they are. Oh, okay, I see. See, I'll just put that somewhere in the middle there. So you just have a permanent eyebrow raise. And then we got our eyebrow, our, our eye colors. So we'll try and get like a blue here. I mean, that's pretty blue, right? Seems kind of blue, like blue gray. Yeah, trying to get to like one specific color here, and they're making it damn near. <laughs> oh, with impossible. the slider. Yeah, with the slider. Okay, so now we're gonna work on this horrible nose that we have here. All right, so we got our nose angle. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we can give ourselves like a piggy nose. Or, or a beak. hook nose. Yeah, like a beak. All right, we're going to go more beaky. 
bird-like and long, long nose. All right, so this is our bridge up there at the top. I guess that's how high it goes. So we'll go something in the middle here. And this is our nose tip height. Okay, so yeah, you got where you can really get the animalistic traits going here. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to cut some of that out because it's taking a little while. But this is essentially what our nose is going to look like here. Uh, with the uh, mouth section, what I thought was interesting is that you can change your teeth type. Uh, so this is the one we're going to have. We're just going to have one. But you can see a couple different versions here. We got some rabbit teeth. Uh, you got a gap tooth. You got... Snaggle tooth. Yeah, some snaggle tooth. Uh, these ones here... I don't know how you describe those ones, but then... I got these ones, the, the last ones, number six here. Uh, we're just going to go with one, and this is what our mouth is going to look like. Again, I didn't spend much time on it, guys, because we just want to progress here. Uh, the only thing I didn't do is the hair. I don't think there's anything else I wanted to show here. You can get the superhero look, though. Oh, on the butt chin? No, I don't know if you can do the butt chin. I meant more like the, uh, the strong superhero jaw. Oh. All right, so we're gonna have some darker hair. And yeah, I kind of have like a darker brown hair. We'll go with this almost black look. And it's probably gonna actually go bald since that's what I am in real life. Not by choice, of course. You don't want that wild mane. I mean, we could go with the shorter look here. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot of choices. Go with the bowl cut. I guess this might fit for our culture. I think we're just gonna go bald. But it was important to get the hair color so that eyebrows would be the right color. And uh, the goatee as well, because I think the hair color controls all of the hair, including the facial hair. Uh, or I said goatee, but I don't know that we're gonna go with goatee. I think we're gonna try and go with the beard. That's what I'm rocking in real life. Uh, so we can go with a well-trimmed beard which is not what I have. We need something really bushy if we want something authentic. A lot of facial hair choices, guys. And they Quite look a few. Decent, which is hard for games to get right. Yeah, usually facial hair, or just really hair in general, but particularly facial hair, is something that games struggle with. And uh, this is really not too bad. Some of it's out there. <laughs> I mean, it's all kind of scraggly in a sense. Yeah. Yeah, I guess none of it's incredibly well groomed, but for the time, maybe that's accurate. Oh wow, you get some pretty cool looks here. All right, so we're gonna go with something. I would go with the chops or that crazy long beard right there. This one right here. I was thinking maybe that one or this one here. Crazy long beard. Okay, I guess we'll go with the crazy long beard because Jinx has spoken. So we're going to go with this one. All right. Yeah, we'll do that one, guys. Maybe there's a barber in town. <laughs> yeah, you can change it, maybe. Or maybe you're stuck with this for the rest of the game. Forever. Who knows? Oh, you get to pick your family? Aww. Oh, that's interesting. So you, you say uh, which uh, family you're born into. I imagine this is going to affect your skills. Can we see what all these are? Okay, so these are our, our weapon skills. One-handed, two-handed, and uh, whole arm. We've got bow, crossbow, and throwing. Riding, athletics, and smithing. Scouting, tactics, and roguery. Ooh, <laughs> so these are all under the cunning. Our social skills are charm, leadership, and trade. And intelligence last down here, steward, medicine, and engineering. All right, so. Your mom seems nice. So this kind of shows you, you know, not just your origin here, but also how this is going to affect you. Ten skill levels and one focus point to writing and two-handed and one attribute point to social. Okay, so this is going to increase the actual skill levels here. I'm not entirely sure how all this will impact the, like how the overall attributes affect the skills. 
Yeah, I don't know if that makes it like faster to learn them or if you can raise them higher or uh, if this will give us some points to spend. Again, not entirely sure. Uh, but yeah, this is riding in two-handed. If we go with this option here, we can do urban traders. This is going to give us, uh, it looks like we're going to get 10 skill levels through most of these, perhaps, maybe all of them. I'll get one focus point to trade in tactics. Okay, what does the tactics do? Okay, so that has to do with troops. That makes sense. Uh, also, the attribute point is going to be in cunning, which looks like all of our attributes start at two, except for the one bonus that we get. We got some free farmers. Okay, so that's a point into endurance. And uh, we'll also get a point in athletics and polearm. Urban artisans. So that's going to increase our smithing in one handed. And we'll get a point in intelligence. Would you like to peruse my wares? The hunters. So this is a point in scouting and bow and a tribute point in vigor. And then vagabonds. This is going to increase our roguery and, and throwing and give us one attribute point to control. Okay. So what do you think we should go with, Jinx? Um, I don't know. Are we basing it off the bonus? I mean, it would make sense. I mean, if we were to base it off my family, like, I don't know that. I guess this one would make the most sense. That'd probably be, bonds. Yeah, the Vagabonds would probably Get make that roguery going. That'd be the most accurate. It'd be based off my real life family. Uh, so yeah, I think we should base it off of the the actual uh, points we're going to get to. If you hover over it, of course, it tells you what they do. So Vigor is going to help us with melee combat. Control is clearly ranged fighting. Endurance is, you know, probably going to help us with yeah, our stamina meter. And running. Uh, cunning. I don't know exactly how that will affect us in the game. Uh, social is going to help us sway people. And intelligence is, you know, reading and learning and such. So we're going to go with the hunter parents. Why not? And we'll likely get more points uh, from, you know, early childhood stuff, all the whatever else comes up in here. So that's not all we'll get. Uh, so as a child, you were noted for your leadership skills. So this is going to give us a focus point to leadership and tactics. You're the boss. And a point in cunning. Your brawn. So that'll get us the point in vigor. And we'll also get the two-handed in throwing. Your attention to detail. Athletics and bow and control. Aptitude for number, engineering, trade, and intelligence. Your way of evil, charm, leadership, and social. And your skill with horses. Riding, medicine, and endurance. I'd say you're brawn. So we're going to keep on boosting vigor. Such a bully. I don't know if any of these are good choices. Uh, this is our adolescence. So like all village children, you helped out in the fields. You also... Right, so we can say we herded sheep. We got athletics thrown in control. Again, you probably want to base these entirely off of this stuff here. I don't know if any of these will come up in the game, like the story. I would think that they would. Maybe. But probably not. But yeah, you can get uh, two-handed smithing and vigor. Uh, repairing projects, smithing engineering and intelligence, gathering herbs, hunting small game, so increase our bow skill, tactics, and control, or trade, charm, and social. All right, so now we looked at these three different steps. I don't know if there's going to be a fourth one here, but we're going to go with this one here to get that social point, and also to get the, the riding and the two-handed, and then stick with the brawn here. And then we're going to do the hunted small game to get some points in bow and tactics. Uh, so moving along here, looks like there is another stage. So this is youth. Uh, so you get a lot of chances uh, to boost your abilities here. Uh, so this is training with the guard, riding, and endurance. That might make sense because we haven't done endurance yet. Um, stood guard with the garrisons. So that's going to be a point in intelligence. Rode with the scouts. Trained with the infantry. That might be the one we want to go with here, get another point in vigor, or join the skirmishers. I, I do want to get the endurance, but I think we're going to do the train with the infantry. It's a good looking horse you got there. Does it change the, the horse up at all? No, it doesn't. Just your, it changes the armor. Your overall armor. 
Okay, see, so we'll go with this here. All right, so this is young adulthood. A lot of different choices. That's interesting. Uh, so before you set out for, uh, for a life adventure, your biggest achievement was, so you can say, defeated an enemy in battle. And it looks like we're also going to get some additional bonuses here. Uh, valor and renown in this case. Okay, so that's the one-handed and two-handed points. You led a successful manhunt, so some tactics, leadership, and cunning. And we're going to get this calculating. Okay, so these are some different stats here. Only 10 to renown. You invested some money in land. Uh, so this is going to get us trade, smith, and intelligence. Hunting a dangerous animal. Had a famous escapade in town. Famous, huh? Yeah, famous. You could read that story there. It looks like you're drinking and got yourself into some trouble. Or you treated people well. This is going to increase your mercy, generosity, and honor. So all different kinds of points here. That's interesting. Where you took an arrow to the knee. <laughs> so is there anything that increases endurance? Looks like that one is the one that does. All right. Well, we might just do this one and get another point in vigor here, guys. Yeah, let's do that. I don't know if any of these are good options here. Uh, this is a story background, though. And we got some different characters over here. Okay, so are these the people we might start out with? Your parents were slain and your two youngest siblings were seized, but you and your brother survived. So this is us. I couldn't even tell. You know, because we're a full-grown man now. We and got this, our dad's hat. And this is our brother here. So we could say we subdued a raider, get another point in vigor, drove them off with arrows, rode off on a fast horse to get that point in endurance, tricked the raiders, or organized travelers to break out. I think we're going to go with a point in endurance this time, guys, which would be riding off on a fast horse. You so were a big jolly fellow. We ran away. All right. Uh, so we do need to enter our name finally. I didn't realize we hadn't done that yet. So we'll be named Praetorian, of course. So quite a bit of character customization here. And I don't know if any of these are the best choices, but that's what we're going to go with here, guys. You could probably get a better character here overall. Uh, if you spend a little bit more time on it than we have. Uh, so this is game difficulty. Okay, so can we just use a preset? So this is freebooter. The easiest setting probably what we should start out with uh, you can see that it's going to be significantly easier if we were to do that but we're going to go ahead and do the warrior guys and i guess that's i would imagine that's default and banner lord it, it, you see everything is realistic here so we're going to go with the warrior what does realistic mean to the game, though? I don't know. I imagine this is going to be rough. Yeah. We might make uh, some adjustments here, guys. Yeah, I think we're going to make some adjustments. So we'll leave all these on easy, I suppose. Because that's, again, looks like kind of the default setting here. We don't want to put on realistic where we die in one hit. This is a let's play, so we don't want to be replaying over and over again. Uh, so we'll just leave everything in the middle with one exception, the combat AI difficulty. Let's put that on normal. I don't know why it's on veteran. Uh, I don't need any more challenge here. I imagine I'm gonna die quite a bit as it is. Uh, hero death and combat, disable battle death for player hero. Yeah, I suppose we'll leave it that way. And that way our other heroes can still die in battle, but our player hero cannot. All right, so that looks pretty good. We don't want Iron Man mode on. I imagine that's where you can't save whenever you want. You just have the single save file. Yeah, we don't want to do that. Uh, so let's go and start the game, finally. Again, a uh, very in-depth character customization system overall. So unfortunately the dialogue does seem really low. Uh, I wasn't able to adjust that. I took a look at the audio settings. There was one for music, uh, one for kind of like combat and stuff, I, I guess. And then like the main uh, sound, the master sound. Uh, but that was it. 
so I don't think we can turn that up at all. It was pretty low. I didn't even hear what he had said. Uh, but let's go through this, through this dialogue scene. This looks like an old training field for the legions. Perhaps we can spare some time and brush up on our skills. The practice could come in handy when we catch up with the raiders. So this is going to be the combat tutorial, which I desperately need. <laughs> Wait, he's so little. Yeah, well, we're and giant. So big. Yeah, we're just really large. You got the giant's blood in you. I'm not entirely sure how helpful, or uh, I thought it would be a disadvantage. Might be a disadvantage being this large. We got different training areas here. Don't hit your head. All right, well, we'll start with the the combat one, I guess. Looks like there's a horse riding one. So you can toggle the camera mode. That means there is a first person, guys. Okay, so we're gonna play in third person. I think that's the standard way of playing the game and first person makes Jinx sick. Yeah, it does. Uh, can we pick this all up? And we could instead go with the two-handed weapon if we wanted to, which I think we're slightly better at. Well, let's go with this one so we have a shield. All right, so we need to talk to him. What do they want us to do? L2 and, okay, so we learn how to block. Yes, I'm doing that. <laughs> I Hit did me. the thing. See, I mean, we're doing it, but, uh. Yeah, he's supposed to attack you. He's not. Maybe I need to get up closer to him. Tap him on the head. Oh, there we go. There he goes. So they wanted me to do the R3 first and then L2. There we go. I see. He just wanted to fool you into thinking that you weren't doing it. He could whack you on the head. Okay, hold up. Oh, now we need to attack. Attack! Alright, so just showing us all the different attack types. You attack from the four different directions. Above, below, left, and right. I guess we can try out the, the two-handed weapons, see which one they like better. If they have them. Yeah, it's right here. Oh. Alright, so... Looks like we're gonna do a defend again. There we go. Alright, so now we're gonna do some attacks, see how this feels. You're a pro. Alright. So I guess we'll go to the next area that really didn't teach us how to fight much. Just taught us the movements. So I hope there's like a combat scenario where I actually have to fight somebody trying to kill me. Uh, this is the horse one. Uh, so we can do horse archery training, mounted spear training, or uh, that's with the sword I suppose. Well, let me pick it though. Do we have the ability to just go for the bow first? Let's do that. We don't want to learn how to ride a bow and shoot when we don't even know how to use <laughs> a bow in the first place. So we got a crossbow here and a regular bow. So let's go with the bow training first. All right, so barrels. looks like L2 is to aim. Okay, pops. I had, there we go. Oh, okay, so it looks like there's a perfect time to release it. And the PlayStation 5 controller does have some nice functions to kind of help you sense it. Yeah, I was just about to ask about that. I haven't played too much with the PlayStation 5 controller, but it is really cool with the triggers. It's a little too finicky, guys. This will also let you guys see the settings here. As you can see, we got a master volume, an effects volume. That's the one I was looking for. Uh, I couldn't remember what the name was. And the music volume, which we had to turn way low because it was really, really loud. Or at least the menu was. We could probably get away with turning this up just a little bit. Here in the... Now that we're out of the menu. Well, yeah, I'm looking to change the, the sensitivity a little bit. Might be in the wireless controller. Perhaps? No. Yeah, I feel like we need to... Reduce the sensitivity, but I'm not seeing anything. Maybe I'm just missing it here. Yeah, camera distance. 
Yeah, I don't see anything mm. for it. Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. Oh, cursor sensitivity. Yeah, cursor camera sensitivity. I think we should turn this down just a little bit. It's just moving too much. Let's just turn it down to like 45. Let's want to see how that feels. And it looks like we are being timed here as well. Oh no, very. We're not going to get them all. Those have to be. I guess it's not counting down. I don't. Yeah, it's just seeing how fast we can do it, I think. Oh well, it does want us to hit all the targets. See, I think it's just about how quickly can you hit all the targets. It does feel a little bit better. Now it's not as finicky with the whoops. And it's still missing. Well, that's an invincible jar. <laughs> oh, we got some putt putt ranges. Uh huh. Yeah. Got Kinda the windmill going. Damn. Yeah. Again, you do have that. Perfect time if you hold it too long, you will not hit anything. So, 71 seconds that seems pretty garbage to me, but uh, we finished it, so that's what matters. That's all. We know the basic controls here, guys. Uh, so, you do not need to use L2 as I was thinking you did, you just hold the R2, and I imagine it's the same here. Yeah, all the same controls. Okay. Just want to get a feel for it. Do we still have to hit? Yeah, we still got to hit a lot of targets. I don't know if we're going to want to hit all these. Are you going to use bows or these javelins? Probably bows. I don't think our throwing skill is very high. I could be mistaken, though. We'll try out the crossbow. Just try all the weapons so we're at least familiar with them. Alright, so here's the crossbow. And so this shouldn't have, oh, it does have a long reload, as you'd expect, but this should allow you to just hold it. Yeah. So that's one of the advantages of the crossbow. You know, you're not going to get exhausted. Trying to line up your shot. Yeah. Doesn't mean we'll hit it, but <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of a long distance one here. All right, let's go for a closer one. Yeah, I don't know. I like not having that short window. It does almost feel a little more inaccurate though. Like you just can't get as close, which would make sense. Crossbows are a bit more inaccurate. Ah, whatever. <laughs> All right. Screw you, windmill. <laughs> that was just piss poor aiming and shooting on my part. Oh, okay, so you don't really get credits. I wonder if you get a point for finishing them all. I wouldn't be surprised if they give you some type of experience if you finish them all. Alright, so let's go and try the, uh, the mounted spear training. This seems like it's going to be really important for us. Uh, how do we get onto the horse? You can't. You're too big. The horse gets onto you. It's triangle, but he's not... <laughs> He's not mounting. Maybe you gotta be in a specific position. Yeah, you gotta be just in the right spot or you can't get on. Watch out, guy. Alright, so let's try this out. I imagine I'm gonna do absolutely horrible. <laughs> I well, feel like one way of I feel like I just crashed into it rather than hitting it. <laughs> and now we're gonna have to go back. There we go. <laughs> gotta get up all Yeah. Well we need to like Pull it back with plenty of time here. And then release with plenty of time as well. There's a lot of timing with this game and the combat. That's what I noticed when we played the last one. It does take some getting used to. We should probably just do this really slow since I suck. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing great. I missed that one. Except for that one. We won't talk about <laughs> it. We won't talk about that one. There we go. I wonder if it exhausts me at all when I hold that back. Well, it's going to exhaust whoever has to go behind you and clean all that up. Mm -hmm. And then reset them all. Yeah, I mean, how many pots are being broke on this, this track here? Too many. Alright, so this is a low one. We got to aim low here to hit it. There we go. 
Now, one of the things I thought was really interesting about this game, uh, the first one when I played it, and I would imagine that's the case in this one as well, is that the momentum is considered, your speed and your momentum is considered for the amount of damage you do. And so if you're going at full speed on a horse, when you hit the, uh, when you attack and you hit the enemy, you're going to do significantly more damage than if you're just, you know, standing still and striking them. So it really encourages you to to train and maximize that momentum power. So you can make sure you're hitting it with as much damage as possible. There's a lot of detail in this game. Can we jump that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah there is. But yeah, I thought that was one of the interesting elements to it, because I don't think I've seen that in too many games before. Alright, so that's a track. We did uh, successfully completed it, and we didn't miss any targets. We hit them all on the first try, of course. Of course. Because how else would we do it? Can we start the next one while still on the horse? Because that would be really convenient. No, of course not. Too convenient, guys. So how do you get off the horse? Oh, it says right at the top. <laughs> I was trying to hit the triangle, but it wouldn't work. So we had to do the uh, down on the directional pad. All right, so we'll try this because this is also pretty important here, guys. Okay, I see. The reason why I couldn't mount the horse is because unlike other games, you can't simply press triangle and then you just mount. You have to actually be looking at the horse. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Mm, okay. I mean, I'm sure, safety first. And so you can see doing. that the reticule is much smaller, or much larger, I mean, when we're going faster because it's harder to hit when you got that speed. Yeah. To account for the momentum of the horse. You know, to lead the target. So that's interesting. I imagine that's something that'll get better. Ooh, we really missed that. Uh, I imagine that's something that'll get better as you like improve your skills and stuff. It's Ooh. nice that they have these practice ranges, though, for you to get better at it before you go into combat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because that's how I learned I was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Did we hit them all? No, we're missing a bunch. Okay, we're not even close to being done. I feel like I'm doing much better with this than I did with the the stabbing. Yeah, definitely. Maybe this is going to be the art tactics. I think I did a lot of this in the Warband game as well. Like firing from the horse. Mm-hmm. Because it's safe. And we missed really close up too. Twice. It's embarrassing. Could you shoot the back of it? I don't know. I assumed not, so I didn't bother trying. All right, so that's a really tight, tight fit, but we got it. We got three targets left, and we missed. I'm gonna blame the jumping of the horse on that one. <laughs> All right, so we need to aim a little bit higher for some of these. Not that one though. And we get them all. We got them all. All right, excellent. So we got one more here for the horse, which is the sword and shield. Again, another one I feel like we should do. Because there's a lot of sword, uh, excuse me, a lot of horse combat in this game. Because essentially, as long as your horse doesn't get killed, that's how you're going to be doing your fighting outside of in tournaments. Is it permadeath for your ponies? <sighs> okay, so can we not slash? Okay, so we have to be paying attention to the direction we're facing if we want to do a certain so far so good move. Could yeah, you go. could be worse. Oh, and we missed the <laughs> up above. I thought I was gonna get that too, because I was like, oh, I know what I have to do here. It was a good <laughs> effort, though. <laughs> first try. Yeah, first try. Yeah, this one might be a little bit tricky, too. Oh, we got it. Yeah, not doing too bad. I'm getting the hang of things, guys. Again, it just takes... takes time. Which is why they have these. Alright, so let's see if we can't get that guy first try. Oh, 
We just barely <laughs> missed it. Hitting people is a lot more challenging. <laughs> I noticed when I was doing the, uh, the one, uh, battle that I did. But man, I was taking down some archers. I was just kind of, I just sprinted towards the archers just and took a while. <laughs> yeah, mowing down all the it archers. It's better to disrupt them so they can't be raining hellfire from mm -hmm. above. Yeah. Now you guys may notice that things may sound a bit different in this video than usual. Many of you guys know that uh, we did just move last week. This is our first video actually since we took a break for that move. I cannot hit this. I'm gonna target here. Come on. There we go. So yeah, this is our first video since we've been back. I'm gonna miss all of them now. <laughs> And have to just walk by. I'm really slow. <laughs> I'm sorry. I complimented your skills. Put you on the spot. Damn, I just keep on missing them. There we go. Well, we're going to hit all these. Because, again, I feel like if you complete them, you'll get, like, an experience point or something like that. Of course, I think we do have a bunch of ones we did not complete. So that'd be a problem. But, yeah, this is our first video back, guys. And, uh... Our setup right now is not the best. Reminiscent of the first yes. mountain blade game. <laughs> a did. little bit, yeah. We're like sitting on like dining chairs right now because you know we got rid of our couch when we moved. No point on moving that old ass couch. So I think that's all of the training for Yeah, that's all the training over here guys, so let's go ahead and get off the horse. And I almost want to just finish this. This one over here. The bow training? Yeah. Let's see if we can't get all of it done. Because, again, I kind of feel like if we complete it, it'll give us uh, Something. some type of experience point. I could be wrong. Trophy? Eh, maybe a trophy. But, yeah, I was thinking more like... Again, I think... I could be mistaken. I think the first game would give you experience if you completed it. It's going to be a little bit slower with our aiming and releasing. Making sure we hit it. Don't waste our arrows or mm -hmm. bolts. Yeah. But yeah, we're over here on like dining chairs with the uh, mic out in front of us. and Damn, we missed that one. It's this one here that made me quit, wasn't it? I was just like, screw this. <laughs> All right, so you got it. So we'll do the javelin training. This is the last one here, guys. And then we'll be able to move to the advanced melee training. So that's what I, I was looking for, I think. Did we not switch to it? Oh, buddy. There we go. These are all up close. Yeah, probably because the javelins can't be thrown as far. Like, I bet they're more powerful. Well, they don't have the accuracy and range. Oops, over here, thought I hit it already. Also, the swing is a little bit slower. But yeah, it's, it's uh, a rough setup right now, guys. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, we gotta account for... Yeah, we gotta account for gravity a bit here. You're doing it. I'm really not, though. <laughs> I can't seem to get these far away ones. Yeah, they're much... Yeah, looks like something's blocking the way. I think you just can't throw it very far, honestly. Yeah, I think you gotta aim way above it. You just lose a lot of your accuracy <laughs> with this distance, which again is why they were all so close. There we go. So yeah, I just gotta aim a bit higher. Is it all of them? Nope, we're missing two. Ah, uh, the windmill. The windmill ones. So these are going to be tricky. <laughs> <laughs> well, because you only have so much time once you release, you really got to time it well. Well, it's not the one you wanted, but it's one of the ones you needed. It is the one I wanted. What are you talking about? Oh, you were aiming. aiming at that oh, one? Of okay. course, yeah. What other one would I be aiming at other than the one I hit, Jinx? There we go. Alright, so we completed 
all of the training. Not seeing any experience yet, but maybe we won't get it until we get the advanced melee training done. So the question is, where is that? So that has us leave the area. I'm not seeing any additional training here. Hmm. And this is the basic stuff. Oh, oh there it the is. I see it's right here. Okay, so that makes sense. All right, so we'll do all of them. So we need to defeat the rookie trainer and the veteran trainer. And so I think this is just going to be a straight up fight. And so you do have to block from the direction that they're trying to hit you. Or it doesn't block it or it doesn't block it as well. You doing all right, though? Oh. Yeah, it's for doing okay. <laughs> he is the rookie, though. True. All right, so he defeated the rookie. And he's still swinging. <laughs> he doesn't know the fight's ended yet. <laughs> He got knocked I'm in the head a couple home. times. All right, so now we're going to fight the big guy, the veteran. He's got a mustache. You know he's going to be tough. And he's old and cranky. Oh, he's just going to town on me. Jesus, give me a break here, guy. Can I swing too? Oh. He hasn't had his Metamucil today. <sighs> Does he not have... <sighs> Can I lock to him? I'm not entirely sure how you lock. He just will not give me a second, though. He just yeah, swings, he's swings, swings. A good time. Yeah, I can't. Uh, I can't hit him. Like he's gotta get tired, right? I feel like we need to. Oh, we stabbed him in the dick. That's the way we gotta do it. Hmm. No, I don't think he does get tired. Honestly, <laughs> he just keeps on whacking. Is there like a counter? I mean, he's just swinging left and right. Yeah, I can't seem to get like a. Yeah, this doesn't seem fair. He doesn't have any stamina. Yeah. Or he's got all the stamina. I mean, he is a veteran. Can you kick? Yeah, square. Kick him in I think. The oh, that's. Or that's what it normally is. Cut. But I think with the. Uh, the shield, you hit with the shield instead. Yeah, I can't get a single hit in. It's just blocking him. And he never gets tired. I'm not entirely sure how you're supposed to defeat this guy. Give him some space. I can't. He goes after me literally immediately. I hit him once. That's not how we're going to win, though. I'm too slow. All he's wearing is a scarf. What's interesting is that doesn't cost us endurance blocking. Yeah, we're going to die. Or, you know, get knocked out, whatever. I can't beat this guy. He just swings mercilessly. <laughs> he never stops. He's serious. Maybe it's because I'm not like uh, blocking in the right direction, so it's not like I'm not throwing him off balance or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Like we're all practicing. He's all die. <laughs> <laughs> like, do I have to fight the rookie again? Yeah. All right. Well, let's try a different weapon here, guys. Yeah, it's a real bummer that we got this uh, try hard over here. Look at him. He's exhausted now. Yeah, see, like, this guy gives us a second to swing. Oh, okay, so without without the shield, you really gotta block the right way. Yeah. Ouch. Okay, so things are a lot harder without the shield. It's probably just best for me to swing like crazy. <laughs> probably. Attack! Alright, so now we're gonna go after him, and I'm just gonna swing like crazy again. <laughs> the fight hasn't even started. Why does he get a shield? Because he's scared. Yeah, I think that's the way to All beat right. him. 
They just swing like crazy. Do what he does. Let's cheat. <laughs> I guess there is no cheating in a fight. <laughs> it's not all that matters is who wins. All right, so that's what we're going to do is we're just going to swing. Are we in the fight yet? I can't even tell. I think so. All right, so this time we got a slow spear. <laughs> so we got range. But, uh... Doesn't help us if he's gonna stay close to us. Yeah, and then just dip out of the way. Yeah, this is gonna be a difficult win here against the the veteran. I feel. I'm just keep stabbing him in the dick. It seems to get him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I do not expect to beat this guy, guys. <laughs> I guess if we I'm stab him in the head like in that. The face. Yeah, right. he's just too uh, aggressive. Yeah, he's pretty good. Mm hmm. Got a stab on the knee. He'll never be the same. <laughs> no more venturing for you, buddy. Got to settle down, find a wife. Yeah, I just can't get away from him to get a swing. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure how the game expects you to beat these guys. I mean, maybe if you're, you've got a lot of skill already, but I mean, this is the beginning tutorial. Yeah. He doesn't get exhausted. Got him. I guess that's how you beat him. You get lucky. Alright, so if we can just beat him with this, which again, I'm just going to try the same tactic I did with the bigger one, the the two-handed sword, is we're just going to uh, swing like crazy. <laughs> yeah, I got to figure out how to lock on. It's not the typical button, like a L3 or R3. Maybe you can't log on. All right, so we're gonna try that same thing with him. He beat us last time. This time we got him, I feel. Maybe not. No, he's serious. <laughs> he's mad, he's salty about me beating him with the... <laughs> you can't see his health, can you? No, you gotta hope he just dies. Just whenever he yields. All right, we did it, guys. Ta -da. So just like that, we've gotten better at fighting. All right, so I think that's it. We're an expert. And so we can press circle to leave, or we can run over here. This allows us to leave as well. All right, so this is the game here, you can see the, the large map. This is what I wanted to get to. I, I mean, I thought we'd get to play a little bit on the map, but uh, obviously not, since this did take so long to get here. So it says now's on here. Before we do anything else, we're low on food. There's a village north of here where we can buy provisions and find some help. You're a better rider than I am, so I'll let you lead the way. Uh, so this is our brother, I'm guessing, that we're talking to. Um, so this is the tutorial telling us how to navigate Calradia, or Calradia. You can explore the, more, the world map by moving the camera with L and panning your view with R and zooming in now with L2 and R2. Okay, so there's our giant character in the map here. So this is the full world map. All the different towns. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can see from the flags which of the countries or factions control that region. Okay, so I don't know if everybody starts in the same location, or if it, it's at all dependent on your culture. I think it is dependent on your culture. I thought I we were the you're... cold guys, though. Shouldn't they be up here somewhere? I'm not entirely sure. I don't re recognize the uh, the flags, so I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I don't either. Maybe you just start next to a mountain. I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if they start you in the same place no matter what, but uh, yeah, this is where we're starting right now, uh, here at the training field. I guess it really would depend on if there's any more training fields out there. So you can see next to each town there's like a little trade item, I think. I think that's the, the trade good that they maybe specialize in. And they're telling us to press X on the map so that we can move. So this is, again, still the tutorial here. So it's saving for us. 
Right, and there we are, oh, we're moving. The little people. As you can see, these are refugees from she the Southern Empire. for her life. So yeah, this is the faction, the Southern Empire, and their clan. So let me just see who owns all these, because I'm just kind of curious if they did, in fact. So that's Sturgia. I would think that's our faction, is these guys, that our culture, I should say. So yeah, I don't think we started anywhere different based. Yeah, there's the Northern Empire. Western Empire, maybe not though. Batania, yeah. I don't know, guys. I kind of feel like it doesn't matter who you start as. You probably start in the same location regardless. I imagine certain areas would be harder than others. So that might be one reason why they wouldn't want you to so, you know, be started in certain places just because your culture. But again, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, well, where are we at? Down here. So you just select X on the map on here and that'll take us to that location. And it does pause whenever we're not moving, apparently. I imagine we could, like, play that. Uh, how do you interact with everything? So here's your encyclopedia by pressing on the touchpad. How do we get down to those little alerts over there? That's what I'm curious about. Okay, so that fast forwards it. I don't want to do that though. Okay, I see. So how do we just play it? Rather yeah, than fast forward pretty. it. Yeah, the map is much better looking than the previous game. Okay, is that fast forward? I'm not really seeing mm -hmm. how. Hmm. Okay. So yeah, these are just refugees. Imagine you can attack them if you wanted to. Yeah, because if I'm a lady and I see a giant monster riding into town, I'm running away, <laughs> heading for the hills. With All my right, goats. so. L1 and X, or the cross button, will allow us to follow them. Uh, where they want us to go, and they want us to go to this town here. I think that's the one they sent us to. Yeah, I think so. I'm just trying to figure out how do I access all the little stuff down there. This is this menu. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. That just plays it. Okay. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure how we get access to that, unfortunately. Uh, we'll have to get it figured out. Uh, but yeah, we see we got some little alerts down there. I was just trying to see, like, how do we access our party and our inventory and all that kind of good stuff. Maybe we click on these. And this, yeah, this is all encyclopedia. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe it's not available to us yet, guys, uh, because we're still in the tutorial. Yeah, perhaps that's what's going on here. Uh, but yeah, this is this is the game, guys. You you travel around on the map, uh, you know, fighting, you know, looking for people to fight, uh, building up your army, so you can get a pretty large army in this game. Uh, and then you can do trading, uh, so you take like resources from one area uh, where they're cheap, and then sell them to a place where they're more expensive. So it does have like a supply and demand system. Uh, you can also do missions, quests uh, for people for money. You can join. Uh, factions and do missions for them and help them take castles. Uh, you can take over castles on your own. All that kind of stuff. Uh, you have relationships with all the different characters. So there's a lot to the game. I'm really looking forward to digging into it a bit more in the subsequent episodes. So I do hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you did, make sure you have a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. If you're looking for anything to watch while you wait for the next episode, Check out the front page of our channel. We got 3,000 something videos all sorted by genre, so you should be able to find something to watch while you wait. If you're looking for any links, check out the description of any of our videos. You'll find links to our PayPal, Patreon, and Teespring store if you'd like to help support our channel. you also find links to our Discord if you'd like to join our community. And finally, you'll find links to all of our social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff if you'd like to follow us on those. So I'll just end off here with the green with Jinx that this is a much better looking map. It's beautiful. Than the previous game. Yeah, this is really nice. Uh, considering the fact that this is just a world map. Remember you get to, you know, actually do your battles and fighting, you know, down with as your character. 
Yeah, you can get all up in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Much closer and just more detailed and just, again, looks a lot better overall. But yeah, very attractive game. I'm impressed. You know, just compared to the last one, I know that was years ago, so you'd expect it to be significantly better. But yeah, I'm looking forward to to seeing more and seeing what all the game has to offer, seeing what it will allow us to do, and just seeing the overall improvements since the last game, Warband. Uh, so yeah, I do hope to see you guys on that next episode. And thanks for watching.